Hi, and welcome to episode six of the Yarn Equals Joy podcast. I'm Rachel, and I'm podcasting from Houston, Texas on President's Day, so I am not at school teaching. I am home doing fun things like knitting and podcasting. And it's beautiful, it's sunny out, it's chilly, which I love because we get a lot of warm weather, as you know. Um, I am Rachley Book Girl on Instagram and Rachley on Ravelry. Um, and I think that's all I need to say. I also have a bag store on uh, Etsy called Joan Mag Bags that has been fairly inactive, but there's some cute bucket bags there still if you want to check it out. Um, I'm going to say all the things that everyone else says. If you like this, please feel free to subscribe or give it a like. I think we are at 55 subscribers at this point. It's a very, very baby new podcast, um, which is fine. And if it grows, it grows. And if it doesn't, it's just sort of a record for me of my makes and my life. So anyway, um, welcome. Um, I have obviously been aware of the uh, conversations, the very serious and heartfelt conversations on, on Instagram and in the knitting community, and I will not belabor the point because a lot of people have talked a lot about it, but um, the way I live my life is the way I live my podcast, and that is, you know, very open and welcoming and warm and loving and that's the way this community around this podcast will be as well. Okay, so um, there was a new to me make along um, started by um, the ladies at the Coop. I can't remember what that podcast name is, but um, a lot of other podcasters joined in and it was a really neat opportunity for people to try something new and I have had an ongoing battle with brioche, um, like a duel to the death kind of battle with brioche. Um, I've looked at all the brioche projects over and over that people are doing. I thought, wow, that looks really neat. And then I thought, how can it be so hard? And I've tried it a few times and each time I've tried it, I've got a little bit, gotten a little bit closer to slaying the brioche dragon. Um, I thought I had slayed it because I have an FO that is brioche that I'm pretty proud of. And I thought, wow, that's just amazing. Um, it was Lavania Patricella's like easy brioche cowl or something like that. I'm sorry, I meant to look the, up the name and I made it in Lamb's Pride Bulky. And, um, you know, I think it came out okay. It's, um, you know, as brioche is, there's my little tag that I love. Um, you know, it's squishy, um, it's reversible. Uh, the only thing besides the later story of subsequent brioche trials, the only thing I, I'm a little worried about this is that the Lamb's Pride Bulky is an interesting mix of like wool and mohair and it's a little scratchy and it didn't feel scratchy when I was knitting with it and it's incredibly warm and incredibly scrumptious, if that's a word, scrumptious. An English teacher should not be making up words, but anyway but it is a little itchy on the neck. This was not for me, because I don't really have a need for this and these aren't really my colors, but I thought maybe my son in New York might at some point claim this. Um, it was really just for me to see if I could do it. So I did it, and then I got a little cocky and I thought, I have done this, I can do brioche. Yeah, not so fast. So I started another one and ripped it out when I had a mistake. And then I was so bored, I was like, ugh, I can't start this again. I'm really awful about frogging. Like I almost, almost never frog and start over because it just, I don't know, I just don't like it. But I tried again in two different colors of the Lamb's Pride Bulky, this Grello version with the yellow and the, and the gray. And I thought it was just so cool. And then I realized that there were just a little, there were just these little blips, like 
I don't know if you can see that, but there's just sort of weird blips. And I thought, okay, well, I'll keep on going. And then I noticed that blip where clearly something got off because that should be gray, obviously, that column. And then all of a sudden it's yellow. And yeah, when everyone says it's really hard to fix brioche, it's not, I mean, I think I could fix it like if I've gone one step over, maybe. I think I've fixed maybe one of those, but just going down and getting off, and I don't know how I got off, and yeah, so this is gonna be frogged. I, I once took, got into quilting, and I was with a, a master quilter. I mean, she was such a master quilter that she was doing repairs for the Smithsonian on their quilts. And one of the things she said was that we don't count it as a mistake unless you can see it galloping by on horseback. And that's something I've always remembered. This is my relaxation. This is my fun time. I'm not really a perfectionist, I guess. Um, I'm usually okay with just letting something slide by with a design element. Um, but in this case, it's such a simple pattern and it just looks weird to me. And once you're off, you're off. So this, unfortunately, is gonna get frogged and I don't know when I'm gonna try brioche again. If I'm gonna try brioche again. I think I will try brioche again, but just annoying. It's annoying. Okay. Um, sorry for the reaching. This is in a bag that you've probably seen on, um, on podcasts a lot. It's the Pleistra bag. I love this Dusty Rose. Um, it's really big and it's perfect for this project, which is my um, Northeasterly blanket. And um, I've tried a few other blankets. I finished a crochet granny square, giant granny square blanket, which I love and use. Um, I've started another one which doesn't see a lot of attention. And there was something about the Northeasterly that I really liked. I liked the idea of, I liked the look of it. And then I realized that um, I had gotten some Koigu minis from my friend Stephanie and I had ordered a, it was like a box set, pencil box set or something from Webbs um, that had a set of um, Koigu like 25 gram skeins, I think. So those were a lot bigger than the minis, which were probably like 10 grams. Um, and they came, you know, it's about that size. This one's a little unwound. Um, ends up like this, sort of wound in a ball. Anyway, I decided that um, my nephew just got engaged and some of my son's friends are married recently and a few have started having kids, and I thought this would be a really nice pattern for me to do, um, where I had uh, kind of a baby blanket size, and maybe I could just, you know, work on them when I felt like it, and have it ready when there was a baby shower, or someone has a baby who's really special to our family, and I wanna send that off. So um, I'm really loving it so far. Um, I just have the first stripe, you can put the stripes on waste yarn and continue uh, widthwise, but I don't want to do that. I want to just finish stripe by stripe. So this is um, this is the first stripe, and you can see all the gorgeous koi goo colors. They do have a unique look, and I really like that look. And I think it's going to be. Um, really stunning as um, as it grows and becomes this really unique um, baby blanket. So I'm really, really excited about that project. And I'm using my um, little signature straight needles that are size 2, 2.75 millimeter. And um, they're perfect for this. I know that um, people have talked on podcasts about using them for the... Um, the little memory square blanket. That, for some reason, that blanket style never really appealed to me that much. I like this much better. So, um, I don't know. 
maybe I'll make one of those, never say never, but um, I'm really excited about this and I think it will be a gorgeous, gorgeous, great and gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous blanket to have. Sorry, my hair is doing crazy things today. Gorgeous blanket to have um, at the ready. Um, and if I can't find anyone special enough, I'll wait till my kids finally have kids, but no one's married yet, so I'm waiting a long time. Okay, um, there are a couple whips because I got started on that, and I, so there are two, at least two new whips. I mean, the, the brioche cowl wasn't even a whip when we last podcasted. I think it was, I lap last podcasted maybe six weeks ago or five weeks or six weeks ago so it's been a long time so I've made started and finished that um, and then I started the northeasterly blanket and I started this other project um, this is a pattern that I've done five or six times it's kind of my go-to shawl pattern it's the amidst shawl um, by Lisa much who is uh, northbound knitting and um, the pattern calls for three colors. I usually do it in two colors. Uh, my mom's cousin and his husband, his my mom's cousin and his wife were visiting and she is about to have a very big birthday. And I thought, well, while I have her here, I can find out what she likes and maybe pick something out to knit her. And that's when she said, I really don't wear wool at all. And I was like, really? And she's like, it's just no wool. And I said, have you felt merino? Cause it's really, really not scratchy like traditional people might think of woolly wool. And so we of course went into my crazy vast stash because the other thing that was funny was her color palette was completely not mine. Like she wanted kind of browns or yellows and I have mostly pinks and oranges. Um, but we did find these two that went really well together and the yellow happened to be um, a magpie fibers. And I'm not sure she even uses this base anymore, but it's a lot of silk and uh, merino. And it is the softest, you know, when people say as soft as butter, this really is. Um, and then there's a Yarn Cafe Creations, which has sort of pops of yellow in it. I don't know if that's coming across on the camera, but it kind of pulls out the yellow. So it's a really soft looking um, shawl. Um, I'm doing it on size seven, which is what the pattern calls for, but I feel like maybe I did the others on six because it definitely feels looser and drapier, but I think that'll be fine because she really wanted it to be a little bigger and I don't know how much um, I will have. This is the Magpie Fiber, the old tag. It's the color is lemon cello. It's her posh fingering, which is 50 superwash merino, 50 silk. So it's a really unusual to me uh, mix and quite beautiful. Um, and then the um, the brown. This is it in its skein. And that is um, Yarn Cafe Creations. And it s'mores around the fire, and this is her fluffy sock fingering, and it's 7525 uh, super wash wool and merino and 25% nylon. So, again, I think, um, you know, this is just a really easy knit. I cannot sort of stress, I wish we had touch of vision. It's so ridiculously soft with that silk. Um, and then the Yarn Cafe um, fluffy sock is also a really really particularly soft base i think she's going to be um, really happy with this but it's it's a really soft kind of pretty combination um okay um let's see so that's that and then we can move to um sort of languishing whips not because i don't like them the first one, which is really, really languishing, and I'm not sure exactly why, is this, the Dracknells, I'll put it up here. Um, it's Melanie Berg. Uh, let me find a better page. Hmm. She goes by Maryland. 
there's a there's the name. It's a picture. I liked it when I first saw it because I thought it was just one. I like really, really big, cozy shells, especially for school. Um, and it, it's really, you know, I was worried, I showed this before and was worried that it was too Halloween-y and people said, no, it isn't. I don't think it is because the orange is sort of an apricot-y orange. Um, and for some reason, the gray has a lot of brown in it, so it almost reads as khaki. Um, I think I'm showing you the wrong side. Yep. Um, I don't know why I won't finish this. I think because at this point, the rows are really, really long. And when I go to do it, I feel like I haven't done anything. There's this neat detail near the end. Um, I also think I'm not finishing it because I'm really, really close to being at the end. I have more gray yarn, but I hardly have any of the orange. This is Quince and Co. Chickadee, by the way. So I'm a little worried, I guess. I'm not someone who enjoys yarn chicken ever. So I'm a little worried that perhaps maybe I'm screwing up, you know, I'm gonna get screwed up because I'm gonna get to the very end and not have enough. However, um, I have a tiny bit of the black left, so if I have to bind off in the black, I don't think that would be so terrible. If I had to order more, I could do that, but it's annoying. It's annoying. Okay. Um, then, what is this? Um, I have um, Helen Stewart's gorgeous Dust of Snow wrap. Let's see if I can... The beautiful Helen Stewart modeling it. Quite, quite gorgeous. Mine is extraordinarily different because I'm not using a light colored mohair to blend. You hold the mohair with the fingering. I think it was designed, um, it was designed so that you could use um, minis, Advent minis. I have just used things from my stash and I've been very happy. I haven't really been too picky about what colors I use because, as you can see, once they blend with the pink, that it, it sort of just really blends everything together. Um, I love the way these colors look on me, except all those lovely ends. I think it's just, it's going to be fun and bright. It is super super soft i love the pops of sort of orange and pink which give it a really fun look um it's just it's just a really i think it's going to be one of my like all-time favorite favorite projects um i'm over 60 percent done so it's going to be really big i'm I'm loving that it's gonna be really big. I love the wrap shape. I need to get back to this. Um, I love it. And I can see that it would be something I could wear, um, you know, wrapped around if I was somewhere cold or if it got cold here. But I could also see it, you know, with a pretty, um, you know, summery top and jeans if it got cold on a summer night, just as a little wrap. It's really, really pretty, and I love the colors. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and that's in one of my fringe supply bags from Woolen Honey in Michigan, which has a special, I have a special fondness for since I spent all my summers in, growing up in Northern Michigan. And this is a Petoskey stone, which is a particular stone that is native to, indigenous to, I'm not sure what the right word is, to that part of the country and always reminds me of being a little girl and looking for those on the beach. And that came from Will and Honey too. Okay, um, I think that's it. Let me just check and see where we are. The Amitz Shoal, the Northeasterly, the Brioche Disaster, the Drachenfels, the Dust of Snow. Okay, so that's it. Um, now we get to move on to unexpected joy. Okay, so um, the Not House podcast, which is the mother and daughter, Heather and Kathy, uh, 
had a giveaway and I almost never, <laughs> I was telling a friend, I almost never win giveaways. I never win, no, I said I never win giveaways and then I said, and I almost never enter giveaways, which is hilarious because obviously you're not gonna win if you don't enter, but anyway. Um, there was something about the yarn they showed. Sometimes I don't enter because I have a ridiculously large stash and I think I just don't need anything unless it's something I really love. And this was something I really loved. Um, these two skeins of Hue Made in colors that definitely go together. Um, one is Tarte and this is the Made Twist in a two ply fingering 100% superwash merino. And this is Blood Orange in Made Cloud, which is a lace weight mohair and silk. And if you can see, there's just something unbelievably gorgeous about these two colors together. I just think they're gonna be so pretty. I wanted to find a pattern. I know there are hat patterns that people are doing um, that have a lot of design elements in them. And I just wanted the fabric created by those two gorgeous yarns to speak for itself. So there's a really easy pattern by um, Christina at Chelsea Yarns. Um, she uses her Chelsea Lux fingering and a Chelsea Lux mohair, and it's called the Road Tripping Hat. Um, that's a little picture of that. It's a free pattern, I think. I'm not sure if it was free. I can't even remember, honestly, if it was free, but it is really, um, it's just really basic that she was wearing it in her last podcast and it looked really good. And I thought that will be the hat that I use for those two skeins. So that will be on the needles fairly soon, I think. Um, and I'm just so appreciative to Heather and Kathy and to the Knot House. It was, it really was just such a fun surprise to find out, to get a little note that I won and then to get yarn in the mail that I didn't pay for that is so beautiful that I would have definitely picked out on my own. So that was really exciting. So thank you. Um, okay, so that brings us to stashing the joy. And I had gotten this a while ago from um, Dags in uh, New Mexico and totally spaced and not talked about it. And she is Definitely a dyer worth talking about and worth buying from if you don't know her. Her company is Zia Wools. And this is her Sandia. And she had posted this color and I was like, okay, that may be my all time favorite color. It's called um, the Little Girl's Gingerbread House. And you can see that there is just something amazing about that color. It has everything in it that I love and it's plump and squishy and I don't know what it'll be, but it'll be something amazing. So I love that. And then um, Jensen, who had, um, I can't remember the name of her company, but she was making little, um, little uh, project keepers and things, um, started dyeing yarn. And I think if I'm not mistaken, she used to be in the hair business and so she has a really interesting idea or sense of color and you'll see sorry for the reaching oh. so I kind of went crazy um, so let me let me explain some of this Christy Glass who you all know and love I'm sure had an interview with Liz from Trey Liz the dyer in Greece and Liz was wearing a shawl that she had made, the eyeball shawl in neons, like neon orange and neon yellow. And it just was the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. And it reminded me, I love neon. And then of course, perfect storm, Jensen in her Sugar Plum Circus yarn posted these colors. And I was like, oh my God, this is Gigawatts. This is Paradisco. And this is Lava Luna and I was just in love and thought that will be something. And then this other color, which is very similar to um, the color that I just showed you from Dags, it's just a little more muted, but has this gorgeous blend of pinks and yellows and oranges, just all my favorite colors. And this one's called um, Bikini Bottom. 
So I had to get two of those. I don't know what those will be, but love, love, love. Okay, so that's stashing the joy. Other kinds of joy. Okay, this will be pretty short. Netflix, Run, Don't Walk, if you haven't yet seen um, and you like sort of true crime and documentaries, um, this is, I can't even explain it, Abducted in Plain Sight, if you haven't seen it and you are someone who who likes that kind of thing, the subject matter is dark. It's, you know, it's about a, a pedophile who worms his way into a very naive family's life and basically just does heinous things under everyone's gaze, like right in front of the parents practically. And it, it is, it's extraordinarily odd and hard to believe that it happened, but the documentary is done in a really um, strong and clear way so that it makes the story sort of front and center. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's worth saying. If you are a, usually a watcher of fiction and not nonfiction, I think you will find this riveting because it, it is almost like a made up story. You can't believe that it could actually have happened. So highly recommend that. Um, and then one other thing I've been enjoying doing the Fiberuary Challenge, um, Creative CC started on Instagram. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it all the way to the end. It's really, really long, but I've been trying some of them. Uh, uh, you know, I think I've done a better job on than others, but if you want to check that out, it's Fiberuary, like February with fiber. So if you haven't yet checked that out, go check that out. Um, and then, my cousin who was here recommended a book that had actually been on my list and I had forgotten about it. So I ordered it from Amazon and it's really wonderful. Lori King, The Beekeeper's Apprentice. Um, I've just started it, but I can tell already that it's going to become another rabbit hole for me to fall down because there, it's a series and this is the first in the series. And basically um, the whole series and this book starts with um, a 15 year old girl walking sort of, you know, the moors in England and stumbles across the great Sherlock Holmes who's sort of retired from his Bacon Street, Baker Street, London apartment to um, a place in the country. And she is incredibly bright and sort of intuitive and very much made of the same cloth that Sherlock Holmes is made of. And even though he's a 50 something year old man and she's 15, they sort of understand that they're kindred spirits. And so she's in kind of a difficult situation in terms of living with an aunt who's not very nice and doesn't really like her. And she needs a friend and she also needs someone who gets her sort of unique intellect. And um, anyway, at the very beginning, it's just really well done and charming. And again, The Beekeeper's Apprentice, if you're looking for a great read, um, we can read it together because I'm just starting. Okay. And finally, the last piece of the puzzle of the podcast is sharing the joy. I took that away for a little bit. Um, I'm going to bring it back this week. We have um, 55 subscribers, which is not a lot. So if you leave a comment below, if you are one of the 55 or if you know, all you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment. So pretty basic. You don't have to tell me, you can tell me what you love to knit. You can tell me, you know, suggestions for the podcast. You can tell me something that I did that you, that you liked or um, enjoyed. And I will send off to the winner. I will pick, you know, before the next podcast. These are two, um, this is Italian wool. Um, it's Lana Grassa, and they are the Santa Fe colorway. This is a sock yarn. It's um, 80 wool, 20 polyamide. Um, it's a, it looks like from the picture, it has a self-striping sort of self-patterning. I think this could be, you know, you could do a cool, some sort of scarf or shawl with this, but you could also make at least two pairs of socks. 
um, or very, very long knee socks or something like that. Um, they don't look exactly the same, but they seem to be the same. So um, anyway, they're made in Italy. Um, they have all these colors and I don't think the camera totally does it justice, but um, it sort of has a marled look, really pretty. So if that's something you would like, just subscribe, leave a comment below, and in all likelihood, you will get picked because there are very few people. Okay, so happy President's Day if you're in the US, happy every day if you're not, keep knitting um, and finding joy. Bye.